driving the prototype of the new electric Nissan Ariya SUV. And we are at the awesome Millbrook testing facility. Now this car hasn't been released yet. Nissan's still working on it. So you're probably wondering, how on earth have I managed to get a test drive? Hi there, can I take a name? Yeah, uh, Steve Sutcliffe. So yes, I've got my hands on the brand new Aria. And this is quite a big deal actually. This is the future of Nissan. It is built on a brand spanking new electric specific platform. Also, it is crammed full of technology. So what we'll do is I'll park up and we'll have a proper look at it, shall we? And well, here it is. Now, first things first, it's quite a striking looking machine, isn't it? I mean, it's got the closed off massive grill that's called a shield, by the way. That's got some nice detailing along here that goes nicely into the sleek headlights. I do like the fact that they've covered up any sort of nuts and bolts on the wheel here. These are the 20 inch ones, by the way. We've got a nice crease that comes down the side and that along with the black swooping roof line helps make the car just look a little bit lower than what it actually is. I mean, all in all, it is still quite a big crossover, but it's not exactly elegant, it's not dainty, but it looks like a concept car in a way. I kind of like it. Anyway, as you can probably tell, the Aria is a big old girl. The wheelbase is 70 millimeters longer than a Nissan X-Trails, and even the lightest version weighs around 1,800 kilograms. Speaking of which, there are four models available. Aria Advance, which has 214 brake horsepower, front wheel drive, 0 to 62 time of 7.5 seconds, 250 miles worth of range, and a 63 kilowatt hour battery. Then there's the Aria Evolve, which has 239 brake horsepower, front wheel drive, 0 to 62 time of 7.6 seconds, 310 miles worth of range, and an 87 kilowatt hour battery. Then you've got the Aria E Force Evolve. 302 brake horsepower, four wheel drive, 0 to 62 time of 5.7 seconds, 285 miles worth of range, and an 87 kilowatt hour battery. And finally, the Aria E Force Performance. 389 brake horsepower, four wheel drive, 0 to 62 time of 5.1 seconds. You've got 248 miles worth of range and an 87 kilowatt hour battery. Now the version that we've got here is the Aria Evolve, which has 239 brake horsepower. We do have the additional 20 inch wheels though. But I have to say, it feels very planted to the floor. It's reasonably stable, especially for a car of this height as well. The steering feels nice and responsive, so that's always good. I say this car definitely does feel quite premium as you're driving it. I mean, it's really nice and smooth. And because it is an electric car, it is super quiet. Although when you do pick up speed, you get the tiniest bit of motorway noise. It's not horrendous, but it is there. So yes, there is a little bit of road noise when you put your foot down, but I'll tell you what else is annoying. This. Find the name was not recognized. Please say a POI category name. No. Please or say a number from the displayed list. No. Please say or select an item oh number God. from the display. Exit. Please use manual controls to... Oh my God. Now the thing is when it comes to electric cars, a lot of us have kind of got used to regenerative braking, which is basically where you can do one pedal driving. So you release your foot off the pedal, it puts charge back into the battery and it will actually bring most cars to a standstill. This doesn't work like that. It slows the car down, regen braking works, but it doesn't come to a complete stop, which I think is a bit of a shame because it's almost perfect. Now 130 kilowatt charging will get you 230 miles range in around 30 minutes. That's not bad, is it? Stop at a service station, pop to the loo, grab yourself a coffee, browse WH Smith, pick yourself up a copy of uh, Auto Express while you're there. So to sum it up, this is smooth driving loveliness, but this is a modern electric car. So the interior tech needs to be cutting edge. And it really is. It's pretty plush. 
in here. It's a really nice, simple, neat dashboard, isn't it? We've got some nice copper detailing along here. I like this very much. Two big 12.3 inch screens. Obviously this one has your digital dials and then this one is going to be your infotainment. Now I've played around with this and it's super responsive. It's quite quick. And what I do like is that you can change the widgets around and move them and sort of personalize them to make it all fit your own personal choices. I like that. There's 4G connectivity and over the air updates. So as Nissan improved their software, it improves your software too. Very nice. You can sit here and go, hey Nissan, turn on my heated seats. Please say or select to command. I didn't want her to answer just then. It's gonna happen every time I say it, isn't it? Hey Nissan, turn on my heated seats. Very nice, nice warm bum. There is also Alexa integration, which means while you're driving home, you can go, Alexa, run me a nice hot bath. You get home, boom, you've got a nice hot bath. How nice is that? Now, my theory is, right, within every car, there is a satisfying button, and I've found it, and it is the climate control you button. You I can interrupt. The I didn't even say this answer. So shut up. Voice recognition. Right, so it looks like it's touch sensitive and it lights up from underneath, which looks really awesome. But as you press it, oh my goodness. Oh, I could just press this all day. Just sit here and press this. I love it. The materials in here are really quite lovely. I mean, as you sit and you look around the cabin and you touch the bits and bobs, everything looks and feels expensive, which is exactly what you want. Oh, and look at this. I can move the centre console all the way forward. Knee rest. <laughs> Lovely. Sat here in the rear seats was a pleasant surprise. So the driver's seat is set up for my driving position, but back here, plenty of legroom, decent amount of headroom. Oh, and shout out to the Japanese design detailing on the doors. Yep, like that very much. At 466 litres, the boot is a respectable size too. It's just a bit of a shame that the added rear motor of the four-wheel drive model eats up so much space because you're going to lose 58 litres if you go for an E-Force version. Oh, quickly, while I've got your attention, we found a little bonus cubby. Press this button, opens up a little drawer. You've got space underneath, but also if you're charging and you need somewhere to plonk your laptop or plonk your iPad, boom, perfect. <gasps> Nissan. So thoughtful. Now the Aria is going to have a starting price of just under £42,000. But if you want the full mega performance car, you need to prepare yourself to fork out around £58,000. But let's be honest, the Aria is off to a cracking start, right? This is Nicola Hume, uh, Steve Sutcliffe. This is Steve Sutcliffe for Auto Express, Millbrook.